Hello to everybody watching at home. My name is Laura Day, I'm with Station, and today I'm joined by Emily Barclay, hoping to become your next Director of Wellbeing. In the next 10, 15 minutes, I'll be asking Emily a few questions about her manifesto and the person behind it to help you decide who to vote for later this week. So with introductions over, let's get started with a couple of questions about your manifesto. So first of all, every single interview that I've done this week, I've asked the candidates the same thing. Because COVID has impacted everything in our lives, how has it impacted your manifesto? It has impacted my manifesto because well-being at the present moment in time is, of course, even more important. It's unavoidable at this moment in time. And it's also everybody's well-being, I think, is facing some additional stresses. So be that on academic or just feeling isolation, being in different countries, missing St Andrews, everybody is impacted in some way. And that just makes well-being even more important. We have to look after it. We have to make sure our support systems are robust and are accessible. We have to just keep an eye out on one another and look after one another. That's great. Um, I was looking through your manifesto and one of your policies involves creating a compulsory matriculation module for all students, which would contain all of the support and services that are available to students. So how will that go further than the undergraduate orientation module that's already available on Moodle? This will go further because what we already have is a good starting point, but we do need an in-depth look at the different support systems available, who to turn to, what services are there and how to ask for support. We have a good basis, but I think having a matriculation module in its own right could really get into depth on these and it ensures that everybody across the board A is refreshed on it every year because you'd have to recomplete it and B it means that everybody has at least the same level of understanding of the services provided mm -hmm. to turn back to. What we have is good, but it can be expanded upon. And having it compulsory, I think is, I'm really big on this component of compulsory because everybody deserves the same access to help and support. Okay, fabulous. Um, I'll ask now about first years because they've had an incredibly challenging start to their university careers. They've missed out on an awful lot of different stuff. So what additional support would you put in place to help incoming students adjust to life at St Andrews? Yeah, I actually, my poor flatmates, I stay in halls of residence and I am the eldest. I'm in my 4.5 years of <laughs> a degree and all of my other four flatmates have been first years. So I got the experience firsthand of seeing how stark a difference it was between my own first year and their first year and honestly it broke my heart for them <laughs> so what we need for them going forward is we need to make sure that the environment is capable of supporting them everybody that goes through St Andrews comes with the expectation of we'll have a reason we'll have a foam fight some people don't want to engage with it and that's entirely okay but these are traditions that are just so fundamental to the St Andrews student experience, that it is not right for an entire cohort to not experience this. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that next year, and this does come under the Dolewell remit, is we need to make sure that Raisin is particularly safe and it is pushed that it's okay, regardless of what year you're in, you can still partake in it. Personally, I think this is something that should be advertised and sort of normalised amongst all year groups because we have so many people that feel uncomfortable with the idea of raising in their first or second years and don't get involved and then finally meet like the crowd that they would love to do things with in their third or fourth years. So an overall attitude where it's okay to re-involve yourself in raising or experience like the foam fight. Yes we want it to be maybe we still want it to be people's first experience of it because we can't have, I think everybody would love to do the foam fight again, but to normalise that not everybody that necessarily engages in it will be first years and that's okay. And we need to make sure that there's enough safety implementation and structure there that it will be able to hold such a capacity. And obviously COVID, we don't quite know what it will look like yet, 
but we want to make sure that when it happens, everybody can enjoy it and everybody will have a good time. We also need to make sure that for first years who will now be going into second year, that there's still opportunities for them to experience sort of the regular nightlife in St Andrews when that's allowed to reoccur and do so safely. So one of my proposed actions in my manifesto is actually some drug and alcohol um, first first aid kit training and this will make sure I don't know I can't speak for other students experiences but I'm sure that we've all had one friend that we've maybe thought I'm not sure how they're going to or how well they are after an evening out per se and we all want to be able to look after our friends and make sure everybody's safe and well and yeah, we just want to be there for one another um, it's this sort of attitude of we want to make sure that nobody goes too wild when we're allowed to finally have things like pubs and nights out again but we also want to be able to enjoy it so we want it safe and we want it available to everyone and yeah that sounds great i mean your manifesto is full of policies that you want to enact but what would be the first thing that you would do as director of wellbeing the first thing I would do is possibly maybe the hardest, but I think it's it would need to be done very soon. I have a slight issue with student services current policy of the latest touch. I think it's a great policy in its idea. And for those who don't know, the latest touch policy is to encourage students resilience. So the idea is that students will get in touch with student services themselves and ask for the support. Now, from student accounts, we know that a lot of people have gotten in touch with student services and had support from them, but still come away not feeling that they've had the support that they need. So this, we need to rectify this with students who are engaged long term with student services, need to have a mechanism by which they can say like, uh, how they think their support plans are going and make any adjustments. That's really important because Student services are wonderful. They're a phenomenal body of support, but we need to just adapt this little policy of this latest touch that encourages resilience because it's not quite helping the right amount. And students, students who are feeling unwell or feeling pressure are already doing a phenomenal job by reaching out and asking for help. And student services are there. They're entirely capable of being the hand that reaches back out and takes you and just goes okay here's what we can do and that way it still encourages the student resilience of like we can recognize ourselves when we need help and we know how to go about getting that help but we would met just a little bit more in the middle by student services who just take your hand and help you by going here's what we're going to do so that would be that's my that would be my number one thing is working with student services to just adapt that little resilience policy. Perfect. I mean, um, also in your manifesto, you outline your experience liaising with organisations and coordinating events. You've held positions on the folk and traditional music society, for example. So how would these experiences translate into effective leadership as director of wellbeing? Yeah, I've been involved with folk and trad for a long time now. <laughs> Um, so I have held the positions of social representative all the way through vice president and president and secretary, which has meant a lot of leadership experience and a lot of collaborative experience. Folk and Trad, I won't go into it too much because that's a different thing, but Folk and Trad runs a minimum of one music festival per year. This has normally got at minimum three different musical acts. And we've had some big names from across different countries as well as like recognized qualified tutors and everything so I'm used to being able to reach out and talk organize events get people in make sure budgets are worked make sure people would be interested and it represents the interests of well, my society but going forward the student populace overall and I'm used to and I love being able to do that. I love being able to listen to what our student body wants and I love being able to deliver it. 
and I have such a strong experience now because this is this is year number four <laughs> of doing so and of course arranging festivals online in the age of Covid has been an extra nice challenge <laughs> but I have this experience of I know and I, I know how to contact people I know how to build idea events I know how to look at what the student body actually wants and sometimes that even means disengaging from what I would like I have many an artist that I've been like, I would love to see them in St Andrews, but if they're not what the student body wants, you've got to tailor it to the student population. And that means sometimes ignoring what you want and focusing on the best for everyone. So my experience overall has helped with that. I also had experience of with the History Society. I have been an executive committee member on Trip Abroad. So that's obviously meant the very logistical looking after the well-being of a group of around 22, 25 people in a foreign country, knowing medical details, being able to gauge if people are still all right, if they're feeling too stressed, if an event's going to be too much for them. I have the physical sort of logistical experience of looking after people as well as the ability to look after and develop events and courses that will help the student populace populous excuse me <laughs> that sounds great you've certainly got an awful lot of experience so now that we've explored your manifesto and your policies a little bit further it's time to find out a little bit more about you the person behind these policies so first of all tell me what inspired you to run for director of well-being in the first place what inspired me to run for director of well-being was actually the fact that i and so many of my friends have experienced the asking for help and getting some, but never quite getting what we fully needed. If it had just been myself, I probably would have just been like, ah, my bad, <laughs> knowing me. But listening to so many voices echo the same sentiment of, I tried. And when you're unwell, just even the act of trying can be so big that that's why I have such a focus on this lightest touch policy mm. is that I am a disabled student. I have friends who have had the same experience and also it goes across the board to everyone's experience of we just need, we just, things are already there. We just need them that bit more accessible. And that's, that's been the big fire under my butt for <laughs> running for do well. That's great. That's a great inspiration. So what is your greatest accomplishment, would you say? Ooh. Overall or at university? Any, anyone you want. <laughs> <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think actually still being at this point in university, <laughs> I have had, um, I have had a lot of experience with things going wrong at university, more so probably than the average student. And the fact that I have proved resilient enough to be determined that I will graduate from St Andrews, <laughs> it has been a really big achievement in its own right. And it just furthers my, I, I think of it as I have experienced these mishaps, missteps, misfortunes. And I have the opportunity to make sure nobody else does. And that's, I think that's my biggest achievement is being able to view it that way and look back and go, I I've done all right getting here. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, you're obviously very determined and hardworking. So what, who, what or who inspires you to work hard and be determined the way you are? My friend, my friend, my, friend. my family, that's probably the like constant answer, but whenever I doubt myself I always have somebody that I can turn to who I always think you're the bee's knees <laughs> and that always just encourages me to keep going and keep trying because for some reason I think the world of these people and they seem to like me too so <laughs> it's always good to have a good support network around you that always helps so in the final minute, I'd like to give you the opportunity to say something to everybody who's watching at home right now. So why should they vote Emily Barclay for Director of Wellbeing? I think you should vote for me for Director of Wellbeing because I know how to listen. 
I know that things go wrong. I know the support systems will need to be adjusted. And I know that I don't even know all the things. <laughs> I haven't experienced everything that you will have experienced, but I know how to listen. And I know the importance and the value of having somebody listen to your experience and do something about it. Because I wish I had had somebody back in my first year that had changed these little bits about student services to make them more accessible for me. And my policies stretch beyond that to just every student across physical fitness, working with the sports centre, working with the DOED on academic policies, working with student services. Everybody is impacted by well-being and everybody will benefit from somebody that can listen to them and enact change. And I really desperately want to be able to do that. And that's why you should vote for me. And with that, I'd like to thank Emily Barclay very much for participating in this interview. I wish you the very best of luck with your campaign. Thank you.